For the last month or so, I have been working on building an off-grid lounge or office shed. I haven't figured out how to construct everything yet, but I know at some point I will need to figure out what to do about electricity. So in this video, I'm going to bring you along with me as I continue to work on my shed while also testing the Blue Eddy power station in different scenarios. So let's jump right into it. So the first area I'll quickly go over is the technical features included with the Blue Eddy AC200P, but if you want to jump ahead to see the power station in action, you can find the different chapters below. As we turn on the unit, we are greeted with a quick initializing screen. The AC200P includes 17 outputs for different devices you may need to power. Inside it has a whopping 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter which is connected to 6 AC outlets. As for the DC outputs, it has four USB type A ports and one USB C port. It's also equipped with two 5.5 millimeter outputs. Making our way to the top, we'll find a 12 volt car or cigarette lighter port. To set itself apart, it also has a 12 volt 25 amp output, which I plan to test with my water transfer pump later in the video. At the very top, the power station has two wireless charging pads for things like cell phones, Apple watches, and other devices that support wireless charging. The AC200P also has a large 2000 watt hour capacity and uses a lithium iron phosphate battery, which can be charged seven different ways. You can charge the unit in a about five and a half to six hours using the included AC power brick, which is extremely large and a bit heavy. The power brick does have a status indicator on top that will light up red or green to let us know when the battery is low or fully charged. They also include cables to plug into the port on the left, which under perfect conditions can recharge the unit with 700 watts of solar in about three and a half to four hours, or about 10 to 20 hours using the cigarette lighter cable. Also, it has two internal fans on the side that will kick on when necessary. Now, this unit weighs about 61 pounds, so it's definitely not a great portable solution if that's what you're looking for, but rather something you'll want to keep in a permanent location. Design-wise, I really don't have many negative things to say so far. I really like the look of this unit, and it feels like it's made to last for quite some time. Now, the touchscreen will display and allow you to control just about everything you'll need to, such as showing the incoming and outgoing power, turning on and off the AC and DC power, showing fault codes, the battery status, and more. So enough about the specs, let's put this thing to use and see what it's all about. I put cardboard over the unit to make it easier to capture the touchscreen in direct sunlight. I first decided to test the Blue Eddy power station with my 660 watt portable planer to level out some of my shed's floor joists. With no major load on the planer, it was pulling about 380 watts and functioning without any issues. After about 30 minutes of planing, I ran into no power related issues and I had drained the battery only 6%. To create support for my foam installation that I plan to install below my subfloor, I connected my table with miter saw and my Ryobi charging base to the power station to see how well they would perform. After cutting all the pieces I needed, I drained the battery only 7%. Now, it's worth stating I'm not a professional construction worker by any means, and I'm probably going to make a few mistakes along the way. However, I've wanted to create a place that felt as though I was out in nature that I could visit anytime I wanted for some time now. So I'm trying to push the fear of making a mistake aside and finally just go for it. 
But unlike my other DIY videos, I won't go into detail for each step of the build, but since this project may take up a great deal of my time for the next few months, I plan to try to bring you along as it comes together. After getting the foam insulation installed, I soon had to take a break from the shed construction process and visit a family member. While visiting, I figured I'd continue testing the power station with some of the electrical devices available. For an early snack, I'll sometimes make a smoothie bowl, so I figured this was a good opportunity to test the Blue Eddy power station. For those interested, for this simple smoothie recipe, we use a mixture of frozen berries, a banana, honey, almond milk, almond butter, and granola. After the Ninja Blender finished blending everything, I was convinced this power station should have no issues powering mid-range wattage devices. However, I was curious to see how well it may power higher load devices, which we'll test next. As some of you know, electric heaters draw a lot of power and usually not ideal to be your primary heating source if your power source is battery power. But anyway, let's see how well this power station performs when an electric heater is connected. From the display screen, we can see that the electric fireplace is pulling about 1280 watts. I also noticed no electrical issues while the fireplace was running. I then tested the power station with a standard washer which may prove quite handy during a long power outage or for an off-grid location. Once the washer's agitator turned on, I could see that the washer was pulling anywhere from 1000 watts to about 1100 watts. After letting the washer finish a full cycle, the battery had drained about 16%. After returning home, I continued working on the shed subfloor. To cut some of the OSB sheets, I used a portable circular saw to again test the power station. As expected, it handled the task without any issues. After the subfloor was installed, I had to take a moment to pat myself on the back for getting this far and pushing through another milestone. Since I still had a little daylight left, I wanted to go ahead and test charging the power station with two 100 watt solar panels. I do like that the included solar cables from Blue Eddy are MC4 cables which make connecting my existing solar panels extremely simple. Since the charging port can be used with solar or car charging, you will need to go into the settings and confirm the DC input source is set to PV and not car. After connecting the solar panels to the power station, I noticed the solar panels were charging the unit but they were only producing about 65 watts. I tried repositioning the panels, but that really didn't help much, but I figured I could go ahead and test the pass-through charging feature, which allows you to charge the power station and use the DC and AC outputs at the same time. The feature appeared to work for the most part, but unfortunately, the sun was starting to set and I was pulling under 10 watts of solar power, so I decided to take the time to retest the solar charging and pass-through feature the following day. With better sunlight conditions, I was producing about 166 watts of solar power, which was a lot better than the day before. I also figured it was a good time to test fast charging the power station with solar and AC power. On the touchscreen, I could see that we were indeed charging the power station with solar panels and the AC adapter. To retest the pass-through charging, I hooked up my 1260 watt portable air compressor. 
Once again, I noticed no issues and I was glad to see this feature worked as advertised as this is something I'd be using quite frequently in an off-grid setup. Another point worth mentioning is that every port on this power station has some type of circuit protection to help protect the internal components. Now I'm not saying you can't damage the unit, but Blue Eddy appears to have put some thought and time into this area. So I went ahead and tested if I selected the wrong DC input source type, what would happen? When I reconnected my solar panels to the power station, sure enough, the unit detected too much incoming voltage and a fault was generated. What's great is I can also tap on the fault button to find out what exactly the power station faulted for, which again in this case was an over voltage fault. Once the user notices the issue, you can exit the fault screen and select the correct input source and the power station should start charging correctly from the solar panels. I next tested the 12 volt 25 amp DC output port with my water transfer pump and the pump powered on without any issues. Note this 12 volt RV cable is not included with the AC200P. Another test I wanted to perform is with the car charging cable. Again, it's important to make sure we select the correct DC input source before connecting the charging cables to the power station. Now I don't plan on charging this power station in a vehicle, but it appears to charge correctly from a 12 volt cigarette lighter port. I then tucked the unit indoors and tested the 15 watt wireless charging output, which also worked correctly. I next tested powering and charging multiple devices at the same time to see if there were any major issues with this scenario. Once again, no noticeable issues during this test. Another critical application I thought this unit would be useful for is powering an indoor vegetable garden such as the one I just recently installed. Of course, this system doesn't use a ton of energy so the power station handled this just fine. Afterwards, I decided to try to overload the AC output to see what would happen. Even though the AC output supports 2000 watts, the power station should allow you to run a load that is between 2000 watts and 2500 watts for two additional minutes before it trips the overload and shuts off the AC output. Anything over this should trip the overload fault instantly. Tapping off and then on for the AC output allowed me to recover from the fault condition. It's also worth pointing out that the internal fans kicked on when I applied the large load on the power station. For my next test, I fully recharged the power station to see how long I could power the 15 watt portable electric heater to verify the advertised battery capacity. Based on my calculations and factoring in the inverter efficiency and the depth of discharge, I should be able to run the heater for about an hour and 13 minutes. After the battery was fully drained, we can see I was able to run the heater for about an hour and 19 minutes, which was slightly longer than I calculated, which is great. So after using the AC200P power station for a couple of weeks, what's my opinion about this unit? Well, I like that everything worked as advertised and the inverter was powerful enough to power most typical high powered devices I would use on a normal basis. I like that everything appears to be well built and designed to last, and I really like that the LCD screen shows you just about everything you'd need to know about this unit, and the built-in circuit protection features are fantastic. On the other hand, I wish they would include the 12 volt RV cable which increases the number of ways you can utilize this power station. And lastly, I wish they included one more USB-C port since most devices are starting to slowly transition to this cable type. Other than that, I think this is a great portable power station to start with that I could easily recommend to others. If you're interested in purchasing the Blue Eddy AC200P, you can find the link in the description below. The power station as of today is on sale for about $1,400, but normally costs around $1,700. Blue Eddy has also provided a discount code that you can find in the description below. So it's been fun bringing you along during this building process and product review. Also, if you currently have a power station, leave me a comment below letting me know what you currently use it for. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful or interesting, and if so, don't forget to like and subscribe to help support this channel and so you don't miss out on future videos. Until next time, thanks for watching.